Are we live? Yep. Hello everybody. Here we are again in the Solari kitchen. Filippo and I just have a espresso to get us all ready to go for this amazing Solari Live cooking class. And you know what we're doing today? We're doing carbonara. Carbonara pasta done the way that Chef Filippo loves to do it. I have a warning for you though. Carbonara pasta is dangerous. What I mean by that is there have literally been battles fought in Italy over one town's version of the carbonara versus another. If you want to get two Italians born and raised in Italy excited and arguing, go up to them and tell them that they make their carbonara pasta wrong and you have a better way of doing it. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. So today you're going to learn Chef Filippo's way, but be careful on the streets who you say this to. Carbonara pasta is dangerous. But we are not afraid here at Solari, so why don't we jump in with no further introduction to the amazing executive chef, Filippo Pacini, who's gonna teach us all about carbonara pasta on this Mother's Day weekend. And if you do have your kit ready, remember we give you these really cool kits that you can pick up here, and you can make the carbonara pasta along with Filippo. He's gonna describe that right now. So Connie, Let's zoom on in to Executive Chef Filippo Pacini. Hi, good morning everybody. So, as Randy was saying, carbonara is many things. Everybody has his own version. I'm not here uh, to show you the original because nobody knows what, which one is the original, but I'm trying to do my, my own version and I, uh, I hope you love it. Uh, you have the kit, so let's start those that has the kit. Let's check if we have everything. So should be in here. Sorry about that. I'm trying to navigate the camera here. Surprisingly, you have asparagus, which is not part of the recipe, but it's my kind of twist. I love to add some fresh veggie. And that's, if you go in Rome, it's kind of a blasphemy, but I love it and I hope you do as well. We have guanciale. Guanciale is the cheap pork. I gave you sliced already. So that's it, the right thickness. And we're gonna clean it up now. Let me go through the list of ingredients. We have the salt. The salt I gave you is enough for five liter of water, which is a little bit more than a gallon. And what we have here, we have eggs, because carbonara is all about eggs uh, today. We're gonna talk about eggs. And we have here, we have pepper. Those pepper is a mix of three different pepper. You can see it here. The long pepper, the Sichuan pepper, this red one, and the classic black pepper in grain. And I love to crash in the... Um, uh, the mortar and the pestle. Mortar Cause it takes uh, this texture that I love, a little bit more bigger than what Hold it there, do. study for a minute. Thank you. Yes, okay. So I gave you some pecorino and some grana. Uh, those are the two cheese I love to use. Pecorino is pretty salty and the grana is less. So I like this proportion that I gave you. And it's like two thirds, one third. And uh, we're done. Carbonara is a very simple dish. I will do half of your dose, so let's start. So as a quick interruption, so what Chef Filippo did, for those of you that just joined, this is the kit that if you came and got one before the class, and about 15 of you did, um, you should have your kits out now, have everything all unwrapped, um, and he's gonna take you through each step by step. So if you haven't gotten a kit yet, for a future class or even a past class, you can go ahead and grab one. It gives you everything you need, except maybe like a serving pan or a whisk or a sauce uh, pan as well. But it gives you everything you need that's special to the recipe. And then you can just follow along, either live right now, which is the most fun, or you can even just come back and see us on um, uh, YouTube. And you can follow along that way also. So, let's start with the grana. And we grate it by hand, very good, delicate on the on the grater. 
we want a fluffy. We don't want too heavy cheese. I will grate half of it, because as I said, I will do for two people instead of four, and save half of the ingredient for next time. So, uh, in the meantime, uh, one, one important thing is choose the right pan, the, the right pot and the right pan. Uh, the right pan is non-stick, actually the really right one is an uh, iron pan, which I cannot find here in the United States, so I think the non-stick is the best I can find. And the right pot, because we don't want to put too much water, you see, 5 liters of water, is all you need and I choose this one because it fits our spaghetti our spaghetti is an artisanal pasta you can see it's bronze trefil there's this nice yeah, hold it steady for one minute yep. if you would thank you and I choose this pot because it, it fits perfectly you can have a higher one but smaller when the spaghetti go down. But this has a question, they shouldn't break the spaghetti up. Never. You put it in. Never. Thank you. Never break the spaghetti. They're gonna break itself. To say hi to a few people, um, John and Sue, thank you for joining. Um, the chainsaw's on board. Oh, we have Karen. Thanks for joining. So let's start Gail and Bruce, hi. Back to you, Filippo. Let's start with the egg now. So, I take four. You're going to take all the eight eggs you have. And we're going to separate. Now, actually, let's do it manually so everybody can do like me at home. We're going to break the egg and throw away the white. Because carbonara is all about the red. The now, if they want to use those egg whites, obviously they can make an egg white omelet or whatever yeah, they'd want to do, right? So, the egg white is only protein. We throw it away. And why... Um while Chef is doing that, just give it a little shout out. All of the eggs we get are from the Eben Hauser um, uh, Egg Ranch in Ramona. Um, everything they do is free range and organic. And um, it's kind of a small, silly thing, but um, we are selling, we are helping them out by selling their eggs here. We sell them for $5 a dozen. So better than you'd get at a supermarket. And um, they're just amazing eggs, free range organic, local from Ramona, five bucks a dozen, why not? So, so anyway, so we have the egg yolks that are in the pan. Yes, let's go ahead, finish with the pecorino. We need, for these, for four eggs, we need 100 gram, as I said, is for two, so it's 50 gram of cheese, because cheese, as Randy was saying, everybody has his own proportion. Some put more pecorino, some only pecorino, but it's gonna be really salty. And we don't want that, so. Ciao, Marco. Hello. We have Hello. Marco from Maestosa joining. Ciao, Marco. And we have Leo, your friend Leo's on board. Ciao, Leo. And if your amazing wife has joined, so you better be. So, Filippo, are you all set for Mother's Day tomorrow? Not that, hopefully, uh, I'm not ruining any yeah. surprise, but Valeria's on the line, but are you all set for Mother's Day tomorrow? And he's always my, he's even my birthday though. Yeah, I was gonna tell everybody that, just so everybody knows, tomorrow, Sunday, May 10th, is not only Mother's Day, but it's also Chef Filippo's birthday. 39 years old, Chef? 36. 36, there we go. Hang on one second. I don't know about that. It's a tough life being a chef. 36 years old, we'll go with that. Okay, so without even wait, I feel like this. Yeah, for Chef Filippo's birthday, we get to have a full day of making Mother's Day meals. Um, he's excited about that, of course. He's gonna basically do his birthday on Monday. But if you haven't put your order in yet, we still have a um, the ability to get in an order for our amazing rib roast of beef. And this guy right here has great suppliers for the best beef. And we also got um, whole Maine lobster. 
So call us, 619-270-9670, if you'd still like to get either our standing rib roast of beef or a whole lobster for Mother's Day tomorrow. Give us a call. We don't have a lot left, but we'll take good care of you. So let's start with the guanciale, which is the other main ingredient besides egg. Filippo, could you just spend a moment for people that maybe just joined explaining just exactly what is guanciale, because that's not something your average American knows yeah. about. Guanciale it looks like a pancetta, but of course for the carbonara we want to use guanciale. It's the shape, and it's basically the cheek of the pork. So you have two guanciale every... I'm going to hold a little more study here. Pork. Yep. And so that's the cheek of a pig. Yes. And it's been cured with pepper. Yep. Don't buy the one with the. Now remember with some of the. Or, uh, other stuff. Now remember some of the people that have joined maybe are new to Italian cooking, Italian phrases. They may not know what pancetta is. So maybe give like a little one on one on pancetta, cured pork, and what is guanciale. Pancetta is basically the same part of the belly, but instead of smoke, is. Uh, cured with salt and some spice, usually pepper and chili pepper. But for the guanciale, come back here and I want to show you how to clean it because that's an amazing guanciale from Sonia Toscano. So if you have the kit, you should be doing this right now. And you clean up both sides. Be sure that there is no yellow, yellow parts. That's, as I said, should be pink, you see. That's amazing. No yellow, you see this little yellow part? Read off, because it's gonna ruin your recipe. No yellow parts. And you would laugh if you knew how much time Filippo spends finding just the absolute best authentic ingredients. This yes. uh, one trolley comes from um, a great distributor, um, Sonia Toscana. If you guys ever want any more, just let us know. So if you decide, hey, I'm gonna do a carbonara dish for my friends, once everything opens up, or my family, we can get you this great one trolley. It's not easy to find otherwise. So, just cut it roughly, once you clean it right. And we start it on fire right away. You don't need any olive oil, any other grease, any butter. Just this grease is enough for the recipe. I just want to do a special shout out to Kara. We saw her this morning when she picked up her kit. Our friend Rope Daddy up in Glendale. Hopefully everything's going well up in the LA area. So, put the guanciale here. And we start. I start with the high fire, you can see. Then we're gonna turn it a little bit down. So the frying pan was hot before you put the one trolley in, correct? Yeah, a little bit. I left on the pilot. Got it. So it, it gets... So it was warm, not yeah. super hot. Okay. We start with high fire. So now what he's doing is... Yep. We get our salt. Again, unwrap your salt from yeah. the kit. That's exactly 35 grams for 5 liter of water. 35 water grams, five liters of water. Is less than uh, actually usual, because as I said, we put pecorino in this recipe, we put a lot of cheese, and the guanciale itself is salty, so it's gonna be very savory. We don't wanna overpower. There you go. Just wanna say hi to our friend John. Jeffrey, thanks for joining. Now we oh, and Ellen. Hi, Ellen. Thanks for coming. Our carbonara. Break the egg. And now we're going to denaturate the protein. And that means we're going to break the egg and it, try to get some air. That's a very, a very important step on our way to the perfect carbonara. So you use the term denaturate. So with any, so there's a lot of protein in these egg yolks. Maybe just explain for a minute what you yeah, mean by every time denaturate. You use egg, you need two process basically. The first one is denaturate the protein. The second step is coagulate the protein. 
So you always first let's uh, think about a uh, kind of a rope and you cut it to ends all the, the the cable inside the spring get messy and that's what is happening here so it's able to get some air the perfect example is the white when you whip the white you can take eight times this volume just because it takes air inside so make a nice almost cream and then we add our cheese and keep doing keep putting air inside now you see more than a cream we are so if you do have the kit at home, hopefully your pancetta is about at this stage. Your water is boiling, you have the salt in. If you're not there, you still have time to catch up, no problems. And just look what he did to those um, egg yolks. Big difference. Now he's folding in the cheese, of course. Now it seems that we do something wrong. Because more than a cream, it comes out a dense paste. But do not give up and keep doing this. Hey, Chef Filippo, our friends, um, Josh is Dining Out San Diego's on. Dining Out San Diego, a great, great resource for all things happening here in San Diego related to food. Oh, Josh. Let me take you can see that he turned the heat way down on the pancetta. I'm just gonna zoom in on the texture of those eggs. I mean, he obviously put a lot of work into it, but he explained why you need to do that. And if you wanna look online, it's all about denaturating the proteins in the eggs. I'm looking forward to seeing these asparagus get cooked as well. That'll go in the final pasta. That's a twist that uh, Chef Filippo has. And again, this would be the entire cheek on one side of a pig that then gets cured, no smoke, for the guanciale. Now you see the guanciale is ready when it takes this color. And it's cooked on its own grease. You can see on the bottom of the pan how much grease came out. Because you put, that is an olive oil you put in. That's the no. grease from the... One chale. Just the one chale. And I'll tell you guys, when this is all done, each of these little babies is crispy, filled with flavor. Um, if you're a bacon lover, this is like your dream come true. Let's find a ceramic container and set the one chale aside for a while. And clearly, um, the one chale is not just for making carbonara. Um, if you're a bacon in egg person in the morning forget about the bacon one sunday or whenever and just get some one chale from us or wherever and surprise your family with something a little bit different i'm just letting you know that is good very good assuming you like bacon so let's go back to our egg and keep stirring and now we're gonna do we set on our pot to keep it warm yeah and to coagulate I was saying yep so we we bring you see that this is a paste more than a cream now heat it up we don't want to boil we want to heat it up and it's becoming creamy our goal is go to 61.5 Celsius degree, set the oil aside, because we pasteurize the egg on the same time. So it's basically cooked, it's not raw egg, but it's gonna have still the taste of the fresh egg. Don't go over 85, so do not keep too long, keep stirring. And then let cool down the grease. 
I'll display you why in a second. So now we can take care of our asparagus. So asparagus as a breaking point, you take in your end and you feel it where it broke. That's not good, that's good. Very easy. They prep where the good is. Don't just cut with a knife, because you don't know. The hard part, we don't want it. The way I like is make a little. Those are cooking very fast and gets crunchy and keep the tip. You know what we should do, Chef? Sometime in the future, we should um, add on to a slurry live with what you recommend for, you know, for the person who just wants to have a nice setup in their kitchen, what knives to get, yeah. what pans to get, what are the basics, right? Without spending a fortune. So I got the pepper on my mixture here. Let's see, how much did you put in? So everybody gets a feeling, yep. That's more what you like. And I add a little bit of water. He's got a couple tablespoons of water. You got a feeling for how much pepper he put in. I would say it was three or four pinches, not that much. Remember, you can always add so, it later. You cannot take pepper out. Kind of half of the guanciale grease that he cooled down, so it's not gonna cook the egg too much, but it's gonna help pasteurize it. And we keep the other to cook our asparagus. Fire. So half of what was in from the Montrali goes in with the eggs. The rest goes for the asparagus. Basically, asparagus stems get chopped up. The flowers at the top stay whole. I got the throw fire. Keep mixing. Now. So, it's time to put the pasta in the water. Get it out. Yes. Let it boil for some. So you see, if you are doing this at home, you should now have your pasta in the boiling water with the salt. So your now asparagus is let's cooking. Let's talk of this. Uh, we want to cook the pasta, but I will cook it like slightly different. We keep a couple of minutes, three minutes on boiling, and then we set it aside. So the few salt that we put is gonna get inside. It looks amazing. I'm very excited about all this. We're cooking our asparagus on the guanciale grease. A pinch of pepper. I love pepper, so actually the mixture I gave you is not that aggressive as an absolute pepper. The long pepper and the citron pepper is more sweet and it's more about the scent. So this butter is... Remember your kit comes with everything including this really great pepper that Filippo has. I crushed for you yesterday on that mortar. Boy, I wish you guys could be here. Just the aromas that are here. So what we're doing, I don't want to put the seven or 10 gram per liter of uh, salt, because as I say, it's a very savory recipe. And we want to respect this pasta, which is amazing. And it's a 
you want to taste the pasta. So in Italy, we don't over dress the pasta. We never do. Now, I think the biggest surprise for me when I watch Chef make these recipes over the year is um, just what he does with these eggs. I mean, I mean that those egg yolks have really, really been processed by hand. You can do it on a KitchenAid, on a processor. Yep. I just want to do the simple way so everybody can do it all. That's the base of our sauce. Again, if you have any questions, send them in, or I'm trying to watch the best I can while filming. And you can also send them to info at slarilouge.com, and we will do our best to answer right away. We can also send your information on the kits. Remember, this will be put on YouTube. And so if you'd like to get a kit, say on Monday or next week, you can always uh, follow along with what Chef does on YouTube. So it's a lot of fun. The kits are really great. They're reasonably priced. And just so you know, when you get the kit, it's enough to make pasta for four people. So this isn't just something you do and kind of throw away. This is your meal for lunch. Four people. Check on your spaghetti. Those actually are chitarra spaghetti. Mm -hmm. While they're cooking, I'll show you a nice thing. Thanks, Filippo. He's showing a little bit more about the guitarra pasta. The guitarra is done with this instrument, which looks like a guitar but it's not. Maybe right. hold it steady for one second, Chef. In case you can't see, this is a, almost like a guitar. So you see on the end, you actually have a way of tightening these wires. The wires go across it. It's one of those things that once you see it, it makes sense, but imagine a flat piece of pasta is laid on top of that. Then you take your hand or a rolling pin and go over it. The pasta then falls down into this little chute and comes out the other end. So it's a great way of making your own uniform pasta. In this case, with this one, you have that size. Or if he flips it over, you have that size. And just like guitar strings, you have this way of tightening it. I think it's really cool. So now we are about half of the cooking time for the spaghetti. So Kara, who's online, we says... take it out oh. from the fire? Hey, Chef, quick question. Kara, who um, is just online, and hello again, Kara, says these ingredients would also make an amazing frittata. Yes, but it's not what we're going to do today. <laughs> we know. We, we actually want to avoid that, because <laughs> we don't want frittata. But if you want to pasta. experiment, she's right. This would be yeah, all the right things. It's an amazing frittata. Asparagus egg and guanciale. So now, there is no fire underneath this, because pasta doesn't need to boil to cook. Uh, actually, what we need is 90 degrees Celsius. We let it boil for two to three minutes, and now it's, it's here. So we don't stress too much the, the starch, and you don't stress the chef as well, because cooking time now is relative. You can leave it there, for a little bit more, not screwing up completely. So let's consider if you have on the on the pack 10 minutes and you cook for three on fire, then double the remaining time on the pot. And the more long we go with this cooking, and the more salt the pasta takes. That's why I put a very little amount of salt, which is healthier and it gets on the right grade because the pasta takes what it wants. You have to consider that the water you see evaporate, but the salt doesn't, so it stays there. If you keep on boiling, you, you lose the, uh, the water and you, you keep the salt and it concentrates too much. So my usual uh, ratio is one liter of water with uh, seven gram of salt per hundred gram of pasta. Say that again one more time for people taking notes. So, seven gram of salt per liter of water 
and you put one liter of water with seven grams of salt every hundred grams of pasta. Yeah, one thing you should consider getting if you don't have one is a simple kitchen scale. They're not going to break the bank. You'll find you'll be using it all the time. Now, this is an artisanal pasta, so the cooking time is really done. So you have your asparagus waiting. Um, you have the eggs with the pepper. One more minute. Delicious. And we mix everything. This is what I want to try afterwards, that one chale. Again, um, while Chef gets some ingredients, we are um, open for Mother's Day tomorrow. We're open tomorrow from 11 until 7. Give us a call. Um, our regular a la carte menu is 100% available. And we also have a couple of special dinners too, including an amazing whole main lobster, as well as a beef rib roast, a rib roast of beef. Some of the best you'll ever have, I promise you. Hey, Betty and Ralph, how are you? Thanks for joining. But give us a call right away if you would like to have either the um, beef rub roast or the whole main lobster. Otherwise, call us anytime. We're open tomorrow from 11 till 7. And today we're open starting at noon in just 30 minutes. And um, we'd love to take care of you with food on Saturday. Okay. Great. So, can you come closer? Sure. And show the pasta. He takes this color here is losing the starch so we want to use this starch to make our cream every time you cook the pasta you get this loose starch so the, that's why we always take water from the pasta pot you have starch on it now the pasta is cooked heat it up a little bit the asparagus we're gonna put our pasta straight on the egg. And just so everybody knows, we've done this with several customers, even getting simple pans and bowls like this. If you're not sure where to go, we can help you get that as well. And I, um, just to echo what Chef said, that pasta water is really important, especially if, if you make too much of pasta and you want to reheat it, say a day or so later, the best way to reheat it is actually not putting the pasta in the microwave. I've made that mistake before. What you wanna do is just keep the pasta water separate, get the pasta water really boiling in a separate container, add the pasta water to the pasta, shake it in a closed container, you're ready to rock and roll. Now, look what is happening. We put our yep, so he's adding a little more pasta water in. Makes all the difference. Now, our egg. Season our pasta. Oh my gosh. And that's what the carbonara should look like. Oh, it smells amazing. The texture. Maybe just lift it up and let it down just a little bit slower. Oh my gosh. That is the texture that hopefully you have, or if you don't this time, just give it a couple more tries. But that is just, leave it there for a second, Chef. That is just so creamy, so creamy. Then you put in these crispy chale. So remember, you have your pepper already folded in. Leave two or three for topping. Or for me, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, one of them just disappeared, so everybody knows. We don't want the pasta too heavy dress. If you'd like a pan just like that, just let us know. We can help you. Now it's time to get the asparagus, which cooked again on the guanciale grease. And now, there's only one thing. 
need to do. I'm ready. Remember, everything here comes out of the kit that if you'd like one, um, you can get. I just wish everybody could be here. I mean, just the aromas, seeing it firsthand, the textures. Maybe hold it steady for one second, Filippo, just so people can see. Just leave it steady for a second. Wow. It is great. The only thing you have to be careful of, I just know with, one, with the uh, carbonara is when you get it, eat it fast. Yeah, that's... Carbonara is not the perfect to go item. Actually, this plate is very tiny. Yeah, simple spaghetti and meatballs and marinara, no problem. But in this case, oh my gosh. Yeah, just the nature of the eggs and so on, it, um, it's something you want to eat right away. So if you are making this at home, you should be plating it up. Your kid is enough for four persons or three hungry ones. I'm just gonna leave the camera right here. And top with the crunchy. crunchy. Just so everybody knows, there's two less now than it started off and they are delicious. Yeah, you can really impress everybody home if you have these long chef's tweezers also. Okay, everybody, that's the final product, and um, a little bit messy, the plating. Yeah, yeah, a little bit messy, but I think we like messy. <laughs> the tiny plate. Okay, I'm going to fade back here. So, go over again the steps. You put the guanciale in the pan. You take half of the grease, you add to the egg that you whisk before, use the, the water from the pot, cook the pasta three minutes from fire and then set aside. That's help you the pasta to stay al dente and to taste the right amount of salt. Then you cook the asparagus on the guanciale grease. So there is no cream involved, there is no butter in this preparation and not even olive oil, which is my main ingredient today. I didn't use it. So the pepper is a mix that I love it, but you can use your favorite. If you like the long pepper or the Sichuan, you go with that. Or just get the kit and everything's there. And we do have um, the ability to make more kits for you. So if you are watching this and you're like, shoot, I wish I would have gotten a kit, just give us a call. I'm gonna send our email address here in a moment and our phone number, but we can definitely get you a kit. Um, Chef Filippo, tell us a little bit about um, any other techniques or things you've done with carbonara or just talk a little bit more about carbonara as a Italian cultural thing. Uh, the main thing is nobody knows the original recipe. Of course, it doesn't have asparagus. Everybody agree uh, the guanciale is the, the main ingredient, not pancetta or no bacon at all. Uh, there is no smoke in this plate because you want to taste an amazing pasta, you want to taste the, the egg texture, but you don't have, as you see, you don't have to overdress because there is a lot of good product in it. The guanciale is, for us, is a, is a gold, and uh, the pecorino cheese romano should be EOP, and uh, grana padano. In this case, I use grana padano and not reggiano because it's more smooth, and it's smoothing out the, the very from the taste of pecorino. Uh, well, that's, that's my version. I hope you like it. Yeah, again, give us feedback on the kits. Um, we're really excited about them. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up. If there's any uh, final questions, go ahead and um, send it in right now. And until then, Filippo, why don't you just spend a moment and talk about what you've been doing with your rib roast of beef, as well as your whole main lobster. Oh, the main lobster is a classic. Uh, preparation with steam and it's very they're alive when they come in uh, sorry we have to, <laughs> uh, to boil them and uh, for the rib roast we cook uh, depending on how big um, a very high temperature and then we uh, we turn off the oven 
and we let them cook for hours in, in temperature fully. So that's a technique that allowed the, the eating to get inside the meat very slowly and make it juicy. You never, you never had a meat like that before, believe me. Yeah, we have a lot of passion for the food here at Slari, as you can tell. There was one question on how much the kits are, and just so everybody knows, it varies each um, class based on the ingredients. In this case, the, cl the cooking uh, class kit for the Carbonara was $36. But remember, that's enough for not only to participate in the class, but you also have a dinner or a lunch for four people. So um, you're gonna really love it. It's a great deal. So 36 divided by four, it's nine bucks a person to have a great lunch you made yourself with literally the best one chale, the best pepper even, the best cheese, the best pasta, all selected by this man. I wanna show you last thing. You okay. see this carbonara that is almost, that's in Italy, we throw it away, or we add a little bit of water with the starch. Meaning you wouldn't throw it away because no. you have your pasta water. That's to get back to what you were saying before. Yep. And we we make it wave again. Eat it up and make it creamy again. Yep. So basically, if you do have leftover carbonara, just to repeat what Filippo said, if you throw it in the microwave, you're basically going to create the frittata that Kara talked about earlier. But if you just simply keep the pasta water, get the pasta water hot, then shake it into the carbonara. Obviously, it's not as good as what you did right at the very beginning, but it's a close second and you're still gonna love it. Chef Filippo, thank you. We're looking forward to our next cooking class next Saturday. Do you have any, uh, do you wanna give any early announcement or do you wanna hold off for now? Know. Let's talk about it. Okay, we're definitely gonna be doing another one next Saturday, 11 a.m. here at Slurry. Stay okay. tuned, stay close to us, call us, send us an email. I sent you the email on the, um, the comments here. You can go back and see us. And we'd love to take care of you with great food today on Saturday, May 9th, the day before this man's birthday. So, Thank you, everybody. We're going to sign off now. Happy Saturday. Happy Mother's Day.